Hi, and welcome to Northwest Brew Talk. I'm Mike Rizzo. And I'm Michelle Rizzo. And this is episode number nine. On today's show, we will have an interview with John Hotchkiss of Odd Otter Brewing, our brew news and views. And to start the show, let's open a Southwestern Hatch Green Chili Blonde by Brickyard Brewing of Woodenville. This beer has 5% ABV. Currently, the Brickyard Tap Room brew system has a small one-barrel boil kettle, but has two fermenters, one-barrel and three-barrel in size. The production brewing is done in Woodenville on a 15-barrel brew house and those two 30-barrel fermenters. That gives a lot of leeway to brew what they want, when they want, and brew a lot of tasty beers. Brickyard. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Brickyard distributes draft and bottles in Washington and Idaho, too. And the tap room has seating for 30. It's a pretty nice tap room. We visited. I can smell... I can smell chilies in this. <laughs> so when describing this yard, this beer, Brickyard says the hatch green chilies are pepper of choice for many chefs due to their delicious flavor and subtle heat. Brickyard has introduced authentic hatch green chili from New Mexico to their blonde ale. This beer has that blow you away chili pepper aroma with great and enjoyable flavor. Definitely found that aroma. And you know what? That's an interesting flavor. They say it's not too spicy. What do you think? No, it's not. You can taste a little spice in it. A little spice, but you know what? It's uh, that's pretty interesting having the little uh, chili flavor in the beer. They say it's perfect pair for pizza, enchiladas, or other southwestern themed menu items. Yeah, I can definitely see that. That's interesting. That's um, it's definitely something. Uh, you know, it's pretty light, light colored. Uh, but it is uh, definitely got a different flavor. I haven't tried something like that before. It can taste just a little bit of spice. But I remember, I believe that they told us that they mixed peaches with that to kind of uh, balance the flavor too. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that is what they said. Hmm. Okay, I like that. All right, now on to our brew news and views. So an interesting story came out earlier this month about this 19th century shipwreck in the Baltic Sea and bottles of sealed beer and wine that were found with it. Scientists reported their findings in the American Chemical Society's Journal of Agricultural and Food Chemistry after analyzing the beer from the 1840 wreck. The beer was diluted with salt water, but scientists were able to analyze and get enough of the original ingredients to get an idea of the original recipe. Samples from two bottles determined they were different beers based on their hop content. Stahlhagen Brewery of Finland is apparently brewing a beer to the recipe. Before analyzing, researchers actually took a sip mm, to try and determine its intended flavors. 1840, <laughs> good, right? that sounds delicious. <laughs> Thanks to OregonLive.com for some background on that story. Yes. Well, BrewBound.com reported that Rubens Brews of Ballard is welcoming a new head experimental brewer on April 1st. No joke, this is not an April Fool's joke. Apparently, Dean Machizuki, currently the head brewer at Pike Brewing, will be brewing at their new barrel house and small batch brewery. Adam, Adam Robbins, co-founder, and quote, I've had a, not and quote, said, <laughs> quote, I've had a long list of beers I've wanted to brew, but just haven't had the time or the space to brew them. I can't wait to turn Dean loose and see what he comes up with, unquote. Machizuki Spent 12 years at Pike and has been head brewer since 2011. He will also oversee the sour program at Rubens. The new brewing equipment will be arriving soon for that. Their new space is expected to open in late April or May. Since opening in 2012, they have won numerous awards for their beers, including 21 medals at World Beer Championships. Wander Brewing of Bellingham opened just a year ago in the spring of 2014. Owners Colleen and Chad Cool started with a 20-barrel brew house, brewing beers, quote, that balanced tradition with innovation, unquote. Apparently, it wasn't enough, though, as the young brewery acquired an additional 2,000 square feet of space to house their expanding barrel project. The new cellaring tanks came from Mark's Design and Metalworks of Vancouver, Washington, and will double the size of their brew house. On May 2nd, Wanda Brewing is celebrating their first anniversary and will soon release their first bottles from their barrel brewing project. 
All right, Silver City Brewery of Kitsap was given the honor to brew the official Seattle Beer Week brew. The limited release is called Sieben Brew, and according to Kurt Larson of Silver City, quote, it's a traditional lager. It's not done very is- easily. If you don't do it well, you can't hide the mistakes, unquote. The beer will be released in cans beginning in April and tapped on May 7th when Beer Week starts. This is the first time a brewery outside of Seattle was chosen to brew Beer Week beer. For a full list of events which takes place uh, May 7th through 17th, visit seattlebeerweek.com. Also, Silver City has recently expanded to Bremerton as an ins- and is installing a new 35-barrel brew house and has redesigned all their packaging and they are adding new beers. They are going all out. Their barrel-aged beers are being released outside of the brewery for the first time. 2015 looks like a big year for Silver City. Thanks to Washington Beer Blog for some story content. And just a quick reminder, this Saturday is the Cask Beer Festival and next weekend, April 3rd through 4th, is the Hopscotch Festival. Scotch whiskey beer and basketball check out hopscotchtasting.com for all the important information welcome back to northwest brew talk if you have not yet subscribed to our podcast what are you waiting for do it now it's free available on itunes podbean stitcher and other sites and if you like us of course give us a review and a rating because that's always really But even more important, tell your friends about Northwest Brew Talk via social media or whatever way you want. That would be great. Now, let's talk to John Hotchkiss, one of the owners of Odd Otter Brewing in Tacoma. All right, we are with John Hotchkiss from Odd Otter Brewing of Tacoma. How are you today, John? I'm doing well. How are you today, Mike? I am doing well, thank you. So... Let's uh, start off with uh, the Odd Otter name. Where did that come from? So, um, you know, we we wanted a a name that kind of captured who we are and what we're trying to do with the brewery. Um, we think otters are hilarious, and uh, they're kind of fun. There's, there's actually a, a video of some otters at... I think it's the Nashville Zoo chasing around a butterfly in their enclosure. It is completely hilarious and ridiculous. And, um, you know, it, otters are a northwestern type of animal, at least sea otters are. Um, and uh, we liked the ability to denote ourselves regionally without saying, hey, we're located in downtown Tacoma, downtown Tacoma Brewing Company. There's, there's absolutely nothing wrong with a geographical designator. We just wanted something that would be a little bit more abstract. Um, but really what it comes down to is, is that otters are just, otters are just fun animals. Uh, they're playful, they're goofy, they're silly. Um, and we take our beer very seriously, but we don't take ourselves too seriously. Uh, we like to have fun. We kind of like to bend the, bend the rules with the beer. Um, and it just seemed like a good fit. Um, I think it's really done a pretty good job of capturing our energy and our direction. Okay, awesome. So you are just one of several owners, and uh, several of you are uh, military, right? That is correct. Of the five of us who founded the company initially, um, three of us have military ties. I was in the Army for six years. Uh, That's where I met the head brewer, who is still in the Army, um, and, uh, one of the other founders was, uh, was in the Navy and is presently in the National Guard. Um, and actually, as it turns out, uh, because of, because of the nature of who we know, um, most of our investors as well have some sort of military connection on some level or other, uh, also. So, um, the very military, it's, it's kind of funny that there was so much military influence in it, and uh, and it's just you know we really appreciate what people do for this country, and it's kind of the place that we all met. Right. So, so um, let's see. In 2014, you did a Kickstarter campaign, and and what did you use that for? So we used the Kickstarter campaign to to get some additional funds for the tasting room build out. Um, and to help us 
just deal with the unexpected, I mean, not unexpectedly entirely, but the tremendous startup cost um, of starting a brewery. Um, now we we have been fortunate to be able to handle the craziness of the financing um, relatively well to this point. Uh, Kickstarter definitely, definitely was a critical part of that. Um, even though we've spent many times more money than the Kickstarter brought in, that you know, it, at this point where we're just about self-sufficient uh, with our tasting room. Um, we look back and, you know, every, every dollar that came in from, from some source, uh, is a dollar we didn't have to find somewhere else. Um, so we raised about $20,000 on Kickstarter and it was, it was truly humbling to, to see how much support people gave us. Um, a lot of them were people that we didn't know at all. Uh, a lot of them were people who just sort of stumbled across the campaign and, apparently saw our poorly made low quality low budget video <laughs> and something struck a chord with them and uh and they decided to get involved and so we we really we really owe a tremendous debt of gratitude to to everybody who's backed us on kickstarter and so we have a couple of places of honor that we have designated for them at the brewery um so it's been it's been a very community building endeavor for us and, and kickstarter is a great a great organization as well. Did you find, uh, or a lot of the, uh, the people from Kickstarter, were they uh, locals? A lot of them were, but a lot of them, there are people from around the world actually who backed us. Um, certainly it was more, you know, South sound centric, but, um, but there were people from all over the country. There were a few people over in, in Europe who backed us. Um, it's interesting. It was it was a bizarre thing to see. We expected that most of the people who'd be back, back and supporting us would be people that we knew, you know, family and friends. And I I don't know exactly how, but it seems like the resources for family and friends somehow was not exactly as robust as we thought it would be. And <laughs> and other people uh, other people decided to carry the banner forward. So it's been in every respect the whole startup phase has been just a very a very very. A strange experience. Yeah. Uh, now, what uh, what type of incentives did you offer on Kickstarter for the uh, uh, investors or backers? We offered a few different things. We offered uh, plant glasses. We offered T-shirts. Um, the most visible thing we have at the brewery is our founder mug club. So people who backed us at $100 or more got a... Uh, a founder's mug, um, which is a unique style of mug. It's a 22 ounce mug and it's always charged at the pint price. So that worked out to a set 27.2% discount, Ooh, nice. uh, for all time. Um, and their mugs live at the brewery. And, uh, so we've actually, you know, there have been some challenges as well. We, we struggled with the fulfillment of the, uh, Kickstarter, um, campaign, uh, we weren't, I think, perhaps as organized as we ought to have been. We had to shuffle around some personnel as a result of of some management uh, uh, sort of quandaries that we found ourselves in. And um, so, as a result, there there were some people who did not get their um, rewards in a timely fashion. And we're going about trying to make that right now. Um, and we're going to have a Kickstarter backer uh, party event kind of thing coming up in the next couple of months uh, to commemorate the one year anniversary of the Kickstarter. Okay, that's nice. Now you um, yeah. you opened in October, just this past October, twenty fourteen, right? Mm hmm. Were there um, any major obstacles that uh, that you found when you were building out the? Oh um, man. Uh, uh, how many uh how many different lists of obstacles would you like i'll just give you i'll just give you a couple i mean you know the the whole thing is a an unknown quantity um and you add into the mix of us not having done business before and kind of feeling things out as we're going that we're in a very old building we're in a building that was built in the 1880s in downtown tacoma it's beautiful it's got a wonderful rich history and it is not square mm. it has 
none of the things that you'd need in order to make a commercial space uh, into a production space. Uh, so we had to do all that. We had to pay for all that ourselves and put, put as much of that in ourselves as we could. Um, there was one day um, on which uh, 60 gallons of beer spilled out of a keg filling machine um, and it covered the floor oh, from... Wow. Basically, it covered about two thirds of the brewery floor with beer, oh, wow. um, and it was the best batch of the amber that we've ever had. Uh, that was kind of unfortunate. Of course, yeah. it would be the best batch, right? Why yeah, of wouldn't? Course. Wouldn't be a batch that tastes like just you know, terrible. So, oh, um, you know, dealing with the city can be challenging at times. Individuals at the city were helpful um, and and responsive, and I appreciated that. But the, the bigger problem is that the whole process was pretty opaque, um, and it's difficult to kind of get. Uh, a window into what needs to be done. Um, you know, there are mu- many, many multi-tiered processes that kind of all depend on each other. And when all the dominoes are all leaning on all the other dominoes, it's kind of hard to know which domino to try and push on first. Um, so but that, the biggest challenges that we've had have been interpersonal challenges. Business really stresses relationships between people. Um, and uh, it unfortunately sometimes you know, you have to you have to make a decision that's good for the business, but may not be good for a friendship. And um, and it's it's just part of it, you know. Um, and it's an unfortunate part of it, but that part exists because because sometimes people can't do what they were intending to do. Um, so without going into too many specifics, sure. uh, there is a pretty funny story about the uh, ancient sewage system and the building backing up about a month before we opened uh, oh, well. a little bit. You know, I don't know how much you want to hear about that, but uh, it was pretty It was pretty funny. Our landlord's a pretty awesome guy. He was there with me at uh, 1230 in the morning on a Saturday, bailing out the sump basin from water that had nowhere else to go. Wow. That had to be fun. So, yeah. <laughs> Makes you think twice about being a landlord. <laughs> yeah. Now, let's see. You are running a seven-barrel electric brewery system, right? Correct. We bought our system from Stout Tanks and Kettles down in uh, Portland, Oregon. So it's American engineering, ger- uh, German, American engineering. I wish it was German manufacturer. Chinese manufacturer, though. Um, and it actually, you know, we've got it up and running now, and, and we've gotten a few batches off of it. And it's it runs beautifully i mean it functions pristinely uh there were some issues getting the fermenters out of the uh out of the shipping container that they arrived to us in um we had to go and get a flatbed truck with a winch on it to pull them off i don't know how the manufacturing side got those things in there but they basically were shoehorned in there like sardines um so but the system is the system is running really well um and our space is is perfect for it, and uh, and they do an awesome job down there at Stout. Nice. So, so yeah, we were until about probably three weeks ago running exclusively on a uh, one barrel, basically glorified home brewer setup. Huh? Um, so we were brewing by uh, eighteen times a month, uh, which is a lot of times. Yeah. And uh, and your head brewer is still active, right? Oh yes, he's very active. He he has a lot of uh, military-related travel that he does. He's got uh, a couple of young children. He's got uh, another couple of places that he kind of um, stands in and does uh, does some other stuff also. So he's probably the busiest person that I know. Um, Along and, with brewing eighteen uh, times a month. <laughs> Yeah, well, no, he wasn't. He wasn't doing that. If he had done oh, that, okay. I think his wife probably would have oh. come and would have would have killed all of us. Uh, <laughs> okay, because that would have left her alone with the three-year-old boy and the one-year-old girl all the time. Which, okay, which isn't good for anybody. It's not good for the child. It's not good for the parent. You know, no, no. a little bit of sanity in there. <laughs> Definitely. Well, that's good that he oh. wasn't doing all of that. Yeah. No, he he is a he is phenomenally talented, and he has a brilliant, I think, mind to create and to develop flavor profiles and things. Um, and actually, most of most of what he ends up doing is sort of research stuff on what kinds of products we should use, what we shouldn't, where we should source them. Um, 
with equipment, what we should buy, where we should get it, and how we should how we should utilize it. Um, and uh, he creates the recipes, and our assistant brewer uh, executes them faithfully and flawlessly. So Owen is kind of the Owen. Owen is the reason that I am I am here. I'm I'm basically the business is all about Owen, and my job is to make it so that he can legally have a place to to sell his incredible beer uh, to people. There you go. So was he a home brewer before? Yeah, he home brewed for about ten years, oh, okay. um, and. He is. He just he thinks about it on a level that I don't really even I don't even begin to understand. I think he thinks about it the way that Emerald would think about a pig. You know, I would look at a pig and I would see maybe you know, hey, maybe there's some pork chops in there. Uh, Emerald <laughs> looks at a pig and he sees an entire symphony of things made with delicious pork fat. So, you know, it's it's kind of a it's a different way of understanding how things go together. Um, Owen sees a final product and he kind of back engineers it in his mind. Okay. Um, whereas I see ingredients and try to put something together. It's just a fundamentally different way of looking at things. Right. And I think that's part of why his flavor profiles are so unique and so compelling. That's what I was going to ask. I was going to ask, do you, you know, what makes your, your beer stand out? You, you do have different profiles than you think than other breweries. Oh yeah, I think we do. I think, you know, there's, and that's one of the great things about craft beer is that there's so many different, there's so many different ways you can go with it. Um, and you know, there is a place for breweries that want to make a really solid, good center of center of the style kind of, you know, porter or, um, or IPA or something like that. And then there's, then there's room for people who want to make a coconut chai porter or a, um, you know, a watermelon half as opposed to just a half of Iceland. Right. Um, and, uh, you know, we've got another, another beer that's a revival of a pre-prohibition style of beer called the Kentucky common ale. And it's made it with barley, corn, and rye, and it's fermented in a bourbon barrel. It tastes unlike any bourbon barrel aged beer you will have. Really? Um, and, uh, you know, there's a there's a space for that, and there's a space for the traditional stuff, and we do some traditional stuff too. Our our luck of the otter Irish stout, um, it's dry Irish stout, and it's it's phenomenal, um, very very true to the style. Um, so Owen's just kind of all over the place, but I really like that the uh, craft beer world is such that is one that allows for such variety and can support it. So. If you want to do something more standard, you can do that. If you want to do something kind of wacky, you can do that too. Right. Uh, have any of your beers come out to be like uh, signature beers yet? It's hard to tell. I think the way that I have approached it is I'm going to kind of let the customers decide what signatures they want us to have. Um, certainly in the last month with the weather warming up, the uh, watermelon Hefeweizen that we call Ottermelon, um, the Ottermelon Hefeweizen has been just selling like gangbusters we can't keep we can't make enough of it um and we've got a pretty awesome uh, peruvian purple corn pale ale called atzel quatzel it's based on an ancient peruvian beer recipe called chicha uh which is a an interesting story in and of itself i won't jump into that right now but that's a pretty awesome uh pretty awesome unique style of pale ale that we do and then i think the coconut chai porter is perennially uh, not that perennially because we haven't even been around a year yet, but <laughs> is consistently performing very, very, very well, and it's a it's a truly unique, uh, off the wall kind of flavor experience, and it's I think it's magnificent. We are going to uh, be getting a chest freezer, I think, today, and and getting some uh, individual sized ice cream cups that people can buy them and make beer floats at the brewery. Oh, nice. So that will be the food that we are able to make because uh, uh, since it's prepackaged ice cream and since the customer is controlling it themselves, they can do whatever they want and the health department doesn't have to get involved. Uh, but uh, maybe our signature maybe our signature item will be Mama Otter's Pancake Porter Floats because those are just... Mike, you got to come down and try one. It's unbelievable. It is, it is terrifying how good it is. <laughs> You make me want to come down right now. Um, <clears throat> now, well, we open at two today. It's St. Patrick's Day, so oh, you know, 
So you are just you are just the uh, the brew pub itself. You're not a any restaurant. Uh, yeah, we're just we're just the brewery and tasting room. Right. Um, we have complimentary peanuts that will say nice things about you if you sit next to them. Um, oh, and nice. we have some uh, we have some chips for sale, and we're going to have ice cream. Um, we're working on uh, finding a way to get some sort of food vending maybe outside. Um, and we might get some Slim Jims or something inside also. Oh, but, yes, we are a brewery first and foremost. Um, food is not what we excel at producing. We excel at producing beer. I've, I've been to a lot of places where I love the food and don't care for the beer, or love the beer and don't care for the food. Um, and, you know, even though there may be there may be additional money to be made there. We're more we're more interested in maintaining consistency and living up to the really high standards we set for ourselves. So we'll let other people make the really good food, and we'll stick to the beer. Okay. So um, you guys do. Uh, I know you said you like to have fun, and you gave a couple of the names of the beers, but uh, you you do like to have uh, fun with the uh, the beer names. Yeah. Yes, we we are. A place that if people do not like puns, they will probably hate coming into our brewery because we just we like to play with words and imagery and um, and uh, you know conceptualizing a beer as sort of an individual identity. Um, for example, our Nader Nonsense IPA was originally called the Otter Nonsense IPA, and our assistant brewer um, dyslexified it. <laughs> And turned it into Nader nonsense, and it just seems right, you know. It's sort of an Alice in Wonderland, Lewis and Lewis Carroll kind of nonsensical word. Uh, Otzel Quatzel is a um, is not anything close to a word in any language at all. Um, that actually came from so the Peruvian purple corn pale ale. We wanted uh, some sort of old Incan name for the beer. Well, all of the Incan names <clears throat> that kind of made sense. Uh, to place on the beer just were completely unpronounceable. Oh. Like a lot of consonants and no vowels. Um, mm-hmm. And actually, there is a an ancient Incan uh, demon otter god. Oh. It's an otter like creature <laughs> with a monkey like tail that has a hand at the end of it, and it eats humans, which is <laughs> scary and kind of and kind of funny at the same time. <laughs> but the name of it was completely un- incomprehensible to us. So. I kind of misappropriated that, applied the uh, Aztec uh, deity Quetzalcoatl's name and deconstructed it, and then you have Quetzalcoatl. Nice. And uh, <laughs> and we're completely sober when we come up with these things, too. So I don't really, you know, we just, we like to goof around. We like to have a good time. And, uh, you know, we don't. We don't feel like we need to name all of our beers in uh, cryptic or magical sounding names. I think it's it's fun to watch people come in and and stumble through the words because I can't even pronounce them half the time either. Right. Or, so uh, like a big game. So uh, fun names, but serious beer, right? Yes, yes. Very serious beer. Lots of fun in the space. We have Cards Against Humanity there. Oh. We have uh, a Rook deck for people from the Midwest. We've got Angry Birds Uno. We've got Connect Four. We got all kinds of stuff. Um, Beckham and chess and checkers. So we <clears throat> we really like uh, fashioning ourselves after kind of a public house kind of meeting place, gathering place, um, and just be in a place where people can come to try something a little bit different. So has that been working? You've been getting. Um, are you open seven days a week? We are starting this week open six days a six. week. Okay. Um, I need to sleep on one of the days, so oh. I pick Monday as the day that I sleep. Oh. Um, That's necessary, huh? And we're going to start doing karaoke on Tuesday nights, and we're going to see how that goes um, for a little while. I think we're going to, when we can manage it, we're going to um, put in a projector and a screen, and we're going to have <clears throat> movie nights, I think, probably on Wednesday nights. Uh, the first movie we're going to show is going to be Super Troopers. Because why wouldn't it be? Yeah. Um, and uh, and you know we've got we've got some fun stuff going on. I think um, we've got a pretty uh, innovative uh, digital presence as well. We we just ran a hashtag uh, wars otter up a movie quote contest. We had people submit on Twitter um, 
movie quotes that they had jammed the word otter into. And I think uh, the winner was, I'm going to make him an otter he can't refuse uh, from The Godfather. <laughs> nice. Um, and, and making anyone an otter, whether you can refuse the otter or not, is just a hilarious concept, I think. <laughs> you know. Um, let's see, we got some other ones. We got uh, one of them. My personal favorite was uh, from 16 Candles. I can't believe I gave my panties to an otter, which I think is also pretty funny. So... You know, we, we're just trying to we're trying to just do something different and make it enjoyable because business is business is tough and business is is a is a challenging thing to be engaged in and you got to have fun where you can have fun. Yeah, makes sense. Um, how many uh, how many different beers uh, do you have on tap? Uh, so we have at present thirteen, all our own. We need more taps. Um, and uh, we've brewed since we came into existence a total of 21 different recipes in the last three and a half months that we've to the tasting room, um, which is kind of insane. Uh, yeah. It's it's a little difficult to keep track of them sometimes because there are so many and there are new ones coming out all the time. We've got a Doppelbach coming out in April called the Doppel Otterbach. Uh, we just nice. made a gluten free beer. Um, Called celiac apple buckweizen, seal spelled S E A L, like the aquatic mammal. Um, and uh, we just have new stuff all the time. It's it's tough to keep up with, and I think our bartenders are kind of wondering if they'll ever have a predictable list, um, and they probably won't. But um, yeah, that's that's part of kind of the little niche we're carving out for ourselves. Is we just always always creating, always innovating. Um, and it's super fun to be a part of it. Well, yeah, that way, like you said, you're, you're not predictable. So somebody could come in and there's something new. Yeah. Yeah. It, uh, it definitely keeps things fresh, uh, fresh and unexpected. You never know what you're going to find when you come into the brewery. Now, do you have, um, have you, are planning, uh, any type of distribution outside of your brewery? We have actually begun it. So we are presently pouring at two different locations. Um, another few are going to be coming online uh, here soon. Uh, we're at Social Bar and Grill down by the Glass Museum. We have the Otto Quattle down there. We've got uh, our Luck of the Otter Irish Stout at Cafe Divino on the north end. Um, Copper Door has bought a keg of Otto Quattle from us, and they'll be pouring that after they... Uh, pour through another couple of kegs that they've got. Uh, and where else? We I've only really been able to talk to about four or five places so far. Um, they all like because, you. You know, as I, we, there's, there's a lot of interest. Um, the biggest challenge is scheduling times to get tastings into people's paws. Sure. Uh, and so that's what we've been trying to really work on. It's tough because St. Patrick's Day is happening right now too. I probably oh, yeah. picked the least flexible time of year to start doing, so. <laughs> but when is a good time right that's right it's, it's always a good time because it's never a good time yeah exactly um now do you do you have any particularly favorite beer yourself or is it just based on you know time of day or whatever it is uh it's sort of based on time of day um ambient humidity uh lunar phase, a variety of things that I take into <laughs> account when I decide what I'm going to drink for the day. Nice. Um, but, uh, you know, with the weather warming up and because I, you know, because my soul is, is from Denver and, and I went to medical school down in Southern California, um, I really, really love the otter melon half of Ison right now. It's, it's like sunshine pouring into your mouth. Um, and it's just, it is splendid. Um, and, uh, but you know, I'll never turn down a pancake porter either. That sounds good. Uh, have you guys yeah. plans to enter any competitions? We would like to, um, this has been a pretty overwhelming process though. And with it being basically run by just, just two of us, by just me and Owen, um, it's been pretty tough to just stay on top of the, strictly business running things even. So we're going to give ourselves a little time. There are going to be some festivals that will come and go that we're going to miss that we would have liked to have gone to, but 
we really want to make sure that we've got things uh, set up well at the at the tasting room and in the brewery, um, and uh, and we'll go from there. We will be participating. It just may take us a little while to get there. All right, sounds good. All right, well, yeah. John, John, thank you very much for joining us today. And uh, I'm yeah, and and hey, Mike, if you yes. ever want to come in. Uh, and bring some food with you. You can yes. just, you know, you can get the food wherever you want. If you need to, if you're feeling up to it, if you're feeling uh, wild and crazy, you can just even jump into the into the sound right out there in Commencement Bay and drag out a stingray or a manta ray or an eel or whatever you can wrangle and <laughs> bring it on in. All food is welcome uh, as long as as long as the and John has got cut off, apparently. World, uh, it's been a very humbling and excellent honor for us. Oh, you got cut off there for a moment. <laughs> I thought you got disconnected. Oh, sorry about that. Oh, no, it's okay. So, I, uh, it's okay. But, yeah, we're, we're really excited to be a part of the whole the whole community. And, uh, and we look forward to serving everyone who comes to our doors. Awesome. And um, I look forward to trying some of your beers, so I will definitely get myself down there. Very good, sir. All right. Thank you. Well, thank you so much. All right. Thank you to John Hodgkins from Odd Otter Brewing of Tacoma. And we'll be right back after this music break from Wind Burial. <laughs>
That was Sleeping Giant by Wind Burial. You can check them out at windburial.bandcamp.com. We at Northwest Brew Talk are on the hunt for the best pizza and beer in Western Washington. Any recommendations from our listeners? We're waiting to hear from you. Now let's try another beer. This is Evo or Evo 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 IPA by Two Beers Brewing Company. Six point two percent ABV, seventy IBUs. This is a twelve ounce can. So in 2007, Two Beers Brewing head brewer Joel Vanderbrink turned his hobby into his passion. After several years of home brewing in his kitchen with nothing more than a five-gallon stock pot, Joel took a leap of faith. In six years, Two Beers Brewing has grown from 100 barrels a year to nearly 6,000 barrels per year, now producing 12 unique beers in its Soto Brewery and Tasting Room. This is a typical IPA. Very citrusy smelling, a uh, nice head on it, and um, a, a good IPA flavor, a lot of uh, citrus. So Two Beers two beers Brewing describes Evo as a showcase Northwest IPA, hopped with Yakima Valley Simcoe, Armorillo, and Centennial, then aggressively dry hopped with Simcoe and Columbus. Deep copper in color, it boasts a deep floral aroma with strong notes of grapefruit and tangerine citrus on the palate. Yeah, you definitely get that uh, citrusy, almost grapefruit like. Good stuff. And that brings us to the end of this episode of Northwest Brew Talk. Make sure that you tune in next week when we're going to have a chat with Jim from Foggy Noggin. All right. This show is produced and edited by me with engineering help from Michelle Rizzo. And if you want to contact us, we're on Twitter and Facebook at NWBrewTalk, or you can email us at nwbrewtalk at gmail.com. Or, of course, give us a call at 541-595-TALK. That's 541-595-8255. And if you leave us a message, we may just play it on the air. Until next time, I'm Mike Rizzo. And I'm Michelle Rizzo. Stay hopping, my friends.